Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we are continuing our discussion of mixtures. It's... Alright, welcome back. Today we're taking a page out of Hollywood's book by turning one story into several. Okay, I think we get it. Alright. Okay, those don't even make any sense. Or do they? Okay, so it's time to bring back our amazing mixture determining chart of science. So with a wave of my magic wand. Vaglio fakey Latin words. Eum. Okay. Okay, so obviously the next part that we need to discuss is the particle size of each of these three different types of mixtures. Now we're not looking for quantifying values here. We're simply looking to compare the solutions to the colloids to the suspensions. Alright, so let's think about it like this. See if you can follow this, this train of thought. Let's start with our suspensions. So they settle out. Why? Well, they settle out because the particles inside are so large that gravity has an effect on them and is able to pull them to the bottom. The solutions and the colloids don't have that because their particles are actually small enough to be able to stay in the mixture without gravity affecting them. So what about the Tyndall effect? Well, let's start again with our suspensions. The suspensions have particles that are large enough to be able to block the light and disperse the light so that you can actually see the beam. Same thing for colloids. But the solutions, they don't show the Tyndall effect because they actually are so small that they don't really have any effect on the light. Okay, so for the solutions we can see that it's too small to settle out and too small to show the Tyndall effect, so obviously that's going to be small. For the colloids, they're too small to settle out, but they are still large enough in order to cause the Tyndall effect, so we're just going to call those medium. The suspensions are large enough to settle out and large enough to show the Tyndall effect, so we're going to call those large. Now, for my Starbucks loving friends who have no idea what those words mean, let me put it into terms that you can understand. That would be your tall, grande, and venti. Now, the last category that we're talking about here is the homogeneous or heterogeneous. And this really isn't uh, too groundbreaking here. Uh, for the solutions, well, everything is so small. We've got small particles, nothing is really uh, settling out, there's no Tyndall effect. That means it's all evenly distributed. Okay, so if I were to take any solution and take five different samples of that solution, like say, uh, like Kool-Aid, oh, yeah. right? So you pour yourself a big tall pitcher of Kool-Aid and you pour out five different glasses of that for all of your friends. Well, each of those five different glasses is basically going to be the same thing. So that means solutions would be homogeneous. Okay, now let's think about a suspension, like say uh, orange juice with pulp. Okay, you get a big picture of the, the orange juice and you pour out five different samples uh, of that for all of your friends. Well, not every glass is going to have the same amount of pulp. So as a result, we can say that suspensions are heterogeneous, meaning that they are different throughout and every sample would be different. Now what about those colloids? Well, colloids are kind of a special middle ground here where they actually have characteristics of both homogeneous and heterogeneous, and yet at the same time, they're neither. But fortunately, nobody ever asks you if colloids are homogeneous or heterogeneous. It's really the solutions and the suspensions that most people are worried about. All right, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please comment below. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Side to my